Hello and welcome back to the David67 Celtic News YouTube channel. Um, today's video is going to be a general roundup of Celtic News, a wee update on how Callum McGregor sees his injury recovery and getting back to match fitness for the vital last six league games and hopefully two cup games left this season. Also, some news regarding a likely date for the vital Celtic Rangers match um, and also a wee bit of news regarding um, a few players potentially coming to Celtic or not coming to Celtic over uh, the summer transfer window. So um, obviously a um, lot of debate, discussion, disagreements, arguments, an awful lot of uh, contrasting opinions um, from pundits, the media, referee watches, etc. regarding the Celtic Rangers 3-3 match and the various refereeing and VAR um, controversies. Um, my feeling is it's now Tuesday, uh, the game is on Sunday, the 3-3 draw and the one point for Celtic and one for Rangers is in the books and it's best now that we've had a good chance to moan and groan and argue and debate it's a chance really just to move on personally did note celtic are writing to the sfa for clarification as to why var told beaten to review the decision and also so some debates regarding whether beaten was shown all the footage or whether he was only shown the footage after Alistair Johnston had uh, knocked the ball away. Personally, I don't really see the point of it. The penalty was given in the end, the penalty was scored in the end, and it was Rangers' first goal of three. Who knows what would have happened had the penalty not been given. Um, it was given just like our penalty was given, just like their goal was disallowed. Um, the game was full of debatable decisions um, and personally I think it's time to move on um, and start afresh and prepare for the game against St Mirren at the weekend uh, which hopefully should it restore or extend our lead at the top of the league. Um, uh, some of you may know I live on the east coast of Scotland and yet again we're experiencing um, heavy rain showers uh, yesterday and all day so far today from midnight onwards and so the prospects of the Dundee Rangers match uh, going ahead tomorrow are potentially uh, reduced and there's even talk of their game being played behind closed doors on Thursday, as obviously uh, the league are desperate to get all the games done by Sunday so that they can properly plan for the 6-6 the six -six split uh, at the end of April, moving into the title deciders in uh, May. On the topic of K um, Callum McGregor, uh, Callum McGregor did acknowledge that he wasn't really up to full match fitness uh, for the Rangers game and certainly his performance was substandard. He was clearly at fault for the second goal. He tended to be rather slow uh, physically and mentally um, with his decision making and his tackling, intercepting, challenges, etc. Um, and it does look like he was uh, rather undercooked in terms of recovery from his five weeks out with the Achilles injury. Um, I think he was physically fit to play uh, in that the Achilles injury, thought to be a small Achilles tear, secondary to long-standing Achilles tendonitis, which would be inflammation in the tendon at the back of your heel, uh, was fully healed. Um, however, he hadn't really got the full um, speed 
flexibility and movement and stamina back after five weeks out of playing and out of proper training. However, he should have a full week of training um, leading into uh, the St Byrne game on Saturday. And so I expect by Saturday against St Myrden he'll be near enough back to um, full fitness in all senses and I look forward to him joining up with O'Reilly who seemed to have a bit of a resurgence and return to form in the last couple of matches. He was one of my better players in the game on Sunday against Rangers and also looking forward to him partnering with um, Rio Hitati in midfield. Um, I don't see Celtic making terribly many other changes to the starting 11 that played against Rangers, apart from McGregor for Iowata. And um, I think Celtic do need to look at the right-sided attacking option, um, be it swapping over Maeda and playing Kuhn or, Mai um, Kuhn or Yang or Luis Palma on the left. I think we maybe we'd be running the same problem in regarding Luis Palma coming back into the team as we had with McGregor coming into the game against Rangers. Uh, Palma seems to have primarily played on the left for Celtic, um, although um, given the fact yes, he is right-footed, he could equally play on the right and uh, in more of an Abada and Jota style. Um, and so I do think there are uh, what options Celtic have uh, in that position and even I've seen a few people suggesting that James Forrest should have a goal um, I feel Forrest is better coming off the bench and certainly his best contributions this season for Celtic have been when he's come on as a late sub and um, given us some nice crosses and passes and scored a few goals for us this season no other mentions so far regarding how all the other players have pulled up and recovered from the game against Rangers on Sunday. Um, but it does look like they got through the game against Rangers without any new injuries and um, did give vital game time to Hitati, McGregor and CCV and Yang in their recovery from minor injuries and knocks or in McGregor's case and Hitati's case, major injuries. Moving on to the transfer speculation, uh, it would appear that Celtic made a 7.5 million offer to sign Urjan Cheker, the Trasbonspor Turkish international goalkeeper. Um, um, however, that um, offer was apparently turned down and Trasbonspor are looking for 12.5 million for Cheker. That does seem a very, very steep prize, a price for a player of his reputation and ability. And I suspect that um, 7.58 million probably was Celtic ceiling for that player. And I don't see them going to 12.5 for him. I would speculate potentially if um, Kelleher of Liverpool was available for 15 million, as was once a quoted price for him, then Celtic probably would give it a go and see whether Liverpool would bite with that offer. However, it does look like in recent months with Kelleher becoming the first choice goalkeeper due to injury at Liverpool, that his price uh, is creeping up towards 20, 25 million. And there are apparently a few English Premier League clubs happy to spend 20 to 25 million on Kelleher for next season. And so I don't see Kelleher really as a viable option. There are a lot of good goalkeepers out there. Several are out of contract. Uh, several will be in the last year of their contract coming into the 24-25 season. And so I think Sally do have quite a number of options, which we've discussed before on the channel. And I'll do my best to keep you up to date with the situation regarding Checker and regarding, regarding any other goalkeepers that are said to be uh, uh, being followed and scouted by Celtic. Another player that briefly seemed to be under consideration for transfer to Celtic was Foytis Ioannidis, the striker at Panathinaikos. He was a player that Ange Postacoglu 
fancied a couple of years ago to come to the club, but that fell through. Since that time, Ioannidis has um, improved quite considerably in the Greek Super League uh, and in Europe and internationally. And it would appear that um, Panathinaikos are looking for 20 million uh, euros plus for him. And so again, I don't see him um, being worth that much money, nor would Celtic consider spending that much on him given his relatively brief period of significant success at the top level. Further player said to be um, closely followed by Celtic is Jake Clark Salter of Queen's Park Rangers, a player who uh, was on Chelsea's book for many years, however was loaned all over the place for years and years and years, never really settling down. He has been at Queen's Park Rangers about uh, 18 months, has had a wee bit of an in and out time due to injury, um, seems to have problems uh, finishing games sometimes as well, which is a bit concerning for a central defender, and his stats aren't terribly good. He is said to be uh, being closely followed by several English Premier League clubs for next season, such as Crystal Palace, Burnley and Wolves, and also promotion chasing Ipswich. And his asking price has jumped, it would appear, from 1.5 to 3 million, which is what it was up until very recently. And now 10 million is said to be the asking price Queen's Park Rangers are looking for. And uh, my analysis of his stats and watching him in highlight form for QPR does not suggest this player is worth anywhere near 10 million pounds, which would, of course, make him the highest ever transfer fee in the history of Celtic, trumping the Odson Edward deal from a few years ago. One other interesting player that uh, Celtic have been looking at in the past, particularly in Ange Postacoglu's years, was Corner Baron, the young Aberdeen midfielder. Um, he is out of contract at Aberdeen at the end of the year and is not signing a new deal at Aberdeen and so would be available on a low fee. That would apparently be £500,000, which is more of a training compensation type deal, similar to the one that may uh, cause Rocco Vata to leave our club in the summer. There appears to be interest uh, from Sassu Ulo and Cali in the Italian Serie A for Baron. Uh, I personally do think that Baron is worth looking at, um, due to his versatility and also the fact that he is Scottish and Scottish trained, all of which would help with UEFA quotas for the next few years and would replace potentially a player like David Turnbull, who was filling one of those slots for us in the last European campaign. Nice wee bit of news also for our on loan player Mikey Johnston. He is on the shortlist for English Premier English uh, Championship Player of the Month for March. And it is nice to see uh, Mikey Johnston doing well elsewhere. And I suspect in the end, uh, Mikey Johnston will be leaving the club in the summer. Um, as it does look like he is flourishing well away from the spotlight and pressure cooker of playing for Celtic and does appear to be showing the talent that many people thought he had uh, elsewhere. One final bit of news, and this is yet to be confirmed, is that there is speculation quite strongly from the uh, SFA, the Scottish Premier League uh, Premiership, and from Sky, that the Celtic v Rangers match is... Um, being penciled in for Sunday, May the 5th. This apparently would fit in with the usual gap that uh, the league like between when the um, split starts and when the last game of the season is, and also would fit in with an apparent double header on Sky Sports, um, as apparently Spurs are playing Liverpool from um, recollection that day and so Sky would have the Rangers, the Celtic Rangers match first 
and followed by the Liverpool Spurs match, a bit of a double header like they did at the weekend with our match, followed by the Liverpool Man United draw. The uh, Celtic Rangers match at the weekend apparently um, got record TV audience figures, which is nice for Scottish football and hopefully um, does improve the reputation of Scottish football worldwide. Although um, I don't think it's really improved the reputation of um, behaviour of players, behaviour of crowds or the standard of refereeing and VAR that we have in Scotland. But as I said at the right start of the video, this is not a time for looking back, this is a time for looking forward. And I look forward to the rest of the season, the six league matches and hopefully the two cup matches towards Celtic winning the double. I know there are many of you out there who are less optimistic than I am. Um, I see myself as being realistic whilst also being optimistic. But I dare say those of you who are pessimistic also think you're being realistic. And the only real way we're going to know <clears throat> how things pan out is how Celtic do in the next um, um, eight games left this season, potentially. And I really hope that Celtic get consistency, Celtic keep their players fit, and all the players get back to 100% sharpness in time for um, the first game post-split at the end of April and the uh, cup semi-final just before that. So that just a bit finishes things off for today. A wee bit of a general roundup. If you are new to the channel, please do think about clicking that subscriber, subscriber button. I am massively thankful to all those who signed up as subscribers yesterday. I think the total was around about 225 and also the incredible um, viewing figures uh, for my channel. Um, whilst three and a bit thousand viewers for many, many, many Celtic channels and football channels is small potatoes and, and nothing for me. 3,000 viewers plus is an absolute dream. And getting the subscriber numbers over 450, approaching 500 is also uh, brilliant for me. And I am so grateful to all those who watch the channel, comment on the channel and have subscribed to the channel. Um, it does make me very happy in my uh, um, decision to uh, do this channel for fun um, in my retirement stroke, semi-retirement. So um, do feel free, as I say, to click the subscribe button, click like button, and do feel free to pop your pleasant, polite com comments in the comment section. I would just maybe just give a wee word of caution to those who do pop comments into the comment section, just to remember that the laws in Scotland have changed a wee bit regarding what kind of things you can and cannot say in a public forum. Um, and do watch out for um, the wording one often uses as uh, my legal advice um, from elsewhere has been that one does need to be very careful as a word that you think is um, non-offensive and non-controversial can be deemed by the courts, etc. And it's quite significant. So we'll call it a day there. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Chat again tomorrow. And hail, hail.